Hi all. Today I'd like to take you on a quick tour of the web GUI interface for IBM's Tivoli Storage Manager for Virtual Environments Data Protection for VMware. To avoid me having to say that too much, I'll just refer to it as TSM for VE, although please do be aware that the entire Tivoli Data Protection portfolio is rebranding as the Spectrum Protect product family. So really, Spectrum Protect is the name to be looking out for now. I'm going to set up, run and report on a complete backup of a virtual machine and demonstrate how easy it is to restore data from this backup. While I'm doing this, hopefully you'll get to see most aspects of the web-based interface. I'll also be taking a look at a relatively new feature, the Self-Service Restore Portal. This is aimed at help desk technicians or even end users and allows them to complete file or folder level restores without any prior knowledge of or access to the Spectrum Protect or vSphere environments. So, with those introductions over, let's start by logging into the web interface now. The web interface is installed by default on one or more of your TSM for VE data mover nodes and is accessible via any standard web browser. Here I am running with the latest 7.1.4 version and accessing it using Internet Explorer. Following the first logon, you will be presented with a configuration wizard which guides you through the product setup and configuration. Then, on subsequent logons like this, the administrator gets access to the Getting Started landing page, which provides handy shortcuts to common backup, restore and reporting tasks. I'm going to jump straight onto the Backups tab now. And then if I just pause here for a second, you can see that pretty much every area of this web interface has a detailed help rollover, which links to additional information. You can see here that I've already defined a run-on-demand backup of a single VM, which has been completed successfully in the past. Existing backup tasks can be readily modified from the right-click menu, but for now, as this backup is around four weeks old, I've chosen to run now and set that backup going again. Whenever you set a task running within the web interface, you're prompted to monitor the progress of this via the Recent Tasks section of the Reporting tab. But I'm reasonably confident that this is going to run OK for now, so I shall say no thanks and stick on this screen and show you how easy it is to define a new backup schedule. You can already see that the interface will be instantly familiar to any IT users, and the usual features you would expect, such as sorting columns by clicking on the headers or filtering by any of these criteria are available. Most common tasks in the web interface are wizard-driven. So if I move up here and choose to create a new schedule, you can see how straightforward this is too. Just name and describe the backup, and then we can select what we would like to be secured. In this case, I'm going to select the entire cluster for backup. This will of course propagate down the tree, automatically selecting all of the available hosts and all of the VMs running on them. If we wanted to at this point, we could also manually select individual VMs to be included or excluded from the backup. Note that you can also exclude VMs from backup by name, and you can use wildcards within this definition. So let's say here that we don't want to include any of our test servers, which of course are named test. I'll also leave this checkbox selected at the top of the screen here. This means that if anyone decides to deploy a new virtual machine in the future, it will automatically be included in this backup task as long as it's running on the cluster that we have selected. Now we just need to tell it which data mover node this schedule is going to run on, and then we can pick a backup type and schedule. TSM for VE interacts directly with vCenter and understands vSphere change block tracking. This allows it to do block level incremental backups of virtual machines, far more efficient methodology than the more traditional full incremental cycles. Now we just need to choose what schedule our VMs are going to be backed up on. And then, having done this, we're presented with a summary of what we've defined. Of course, we're happy with this, and so we submit the schedule and the node associations to the TSM server. Returning to the Schedule Summary screen, we can see an overview of the schedule settings and can easily modify or even remove a schedule via the right-click context menus. If a backup schedule is previously completed, an overview of the results of this will be shown here. But for more detailed information, we need to head over now to the Reporting tab. Under the Recent Tasks pane, you can see that our backup is progressing nicely, although we do have a warning that CBT data could not be obtained for that VM. Crucially, you can see that this hasn't caused the backup to fail. It's just reverted to running a full backup. With the last backup being over a month ago, it's not surprising this demo VM has been heavily modified since then. And the important point is we're still going to get a successful capture of the data. Moving on to the Status tab allows us to see various overviews and more detailed reports of the environment. For example, this report showing the coverage status of all VMs indicates that only our demo VM has a valid backup to this TSM server and that the backup is officially out of date. With regular backups of this VM running, we could also view a detailed history of each of these tasks. 
You can run reports to show VMs with or without valid or recent backups, and we can also see details of any backups that have failed and failures of any recently completed schedules. There is also a useful report which lists VMs which are still holding backup data, but where the VM itself has been removed from vCenter. If I now generate a new report showing VMs with current valid backup, we can see that the task we set running earlier has completed and that all data from our demo VM has now been secured to the TSM server. Let's move on to seeing how we might be able to recover some of this data from the backup. I'll move on now to the appropriately named Restore tab and expand out this tray for our data center and ESXi host and then from here we can select our VM and show the details of the backups that are available to be recovered for this. At this point we have two choices. We can either mount or restore the virtual machine. First let's imagine that the original VM has been deleted or perhaps corrupted by an operating system upgrade and we need to get the entire system back up and running as soon as possible. So we'll pick the restore option and again this launches a step-by-step -step wizard for us to run through. The traditional option at this point would be to perform a full VM restore wherein all the files comprising that system are copied back over from TSM to the VMware data store. However we also have a couple of instant options available to us. These allow the VM to be registered with vCenter and booted whilst the data is still stored on the TSM server. This means the VM can be returned to service within seconds while in the background data is transferred from TSM to vSphere storage and the running state of the VM seamlessly switched over once the restore is completed. Of course this does require that the TSM backend storage has sufficient bandwidth and I.O. to be able to provide for the running load of that VM. For our demo environment we're going to have to stick to plan A and choose a simple VM restore. You can see that we can either overwrite the existing VM by restoring the original ESXi host data store location and VM name, or we can choose to modify any of these details and restore a full copy of the VM, leaving the current machine as is. Rather than waiting again for a full restore to complete, let's instead drop back to the other restore option we have, which is to mount the backed up VMDK file as a nice SCSI disk attached to the data mover machine. This will let us restore individual files or folders. As with the backup, we can select which data mover is going to be used to make the data available. We need to tell it if it's a Windows or Linux based operating system and we need to provide a folder path for it to create the mount point in. If we wanted to we could also share this folder over the network so a user or group of users could access the data remotely. Having submitted our mount request to the server we can view the progress of the task. This does include a 30 second wait period which is to give the Windows iSCSI driver time to detect the changes and for the operating system to make the disk available for access. So while that's going on I'll open up Windows Explorer so we can access the data once it's been made available. The mount task is not officially completed yet but I know at this point we're just waiting for confirmation from Windows that the mount is completed. So if we go ahead and refresh our Windows Explorer view we can now see that the TSM mount folder has been created and we can browse down through the folder tree of our backed up VM and view the files that we might want to restore. While stored in TSM these files are read only of course and any changes made will be discarded but we can simply drag and drop or otherwise copy any data we want out of any location from the VM to other storage. Now that we've saved the day by rescuing those business critical files we can return to the restore tab in order to view the details of any drives currently mounted and in this case tidy up after ourselves by dismounting them again. Clearly the ability to pull individual files out of a full VM backup without restoring the entire VM is very handy, so IBM have expanded this feature to make it available to end users. I'll switch over now to the self-service portal login, and this time you can see that I'm logging in using Windows credentials rather than an account with vCenter or TSM permissions as before. Being aimed at end users and designed to be secure, the only options available to us are to find and restore our files or monitor a restore already in progress. You can see that it's a clean, uncluttered interface and it's almost impossible to get lost or go wrong here. The calendar for our chosen VM is already open and you can see that the most recent backup is highlighted. Quickly flicking back through the calendar, you can see that days where backups exist are emphasized and selecting one of these days will show the times that the backup were taken. Once a backup has been selected, the data mover node communicates with the TSM server and mounts a copy of the data via iSCSI in exactly the same way as previously shown. If we were to switch back to the admin GUI, we'd have the same reporting available as if an administrator would start to the process. Whilst we're waiting for the disk to mount, I'll browse over the network to the running VM and find the files that we want to restore. Of course, as a non-admin user, I'm not in control of where the mount point is created or what it's called. Additionally, the entire process is logged locally 
and also tracked via the TSM server log, so full centralised auditing of my actions are available. Once the disk mount is completed, we can move through the folder tree and highlight a file or files that we'd like to restore in the usual way. Having selected these two text files, down at the bottom here we have a choice of where to restore the data to and a useful pop-up explanation of this for the user. We'll leave this at the default to restore to the original location and hit the restore button. The slide out menu appears to show us the progress of the restore and given the size of those text files I expect this to take no more than a few seconds. We can see that because we chose to restore to the original folder location and that the original files still existed here, they have not been overwritten. Instead, the date and timestamp has been appended to the name of the restored files. Note also that the original file metadata is still intact and that the date modified value of the restored files has been preserved. With this inability to overwrite existing files and the fact that the interface does not provide any other functionality for the end user makes it as safe as possibly can be and requires no special knowledge or training to operate. Once the restore has been completed, the mounted disk will be automatically dismounted with no interaction from the user. That marks the end of our demonstration of the TSM for VE Web GUI interface. Hopefully you've shown what a straightforward but powerful product is provided here. If you're interested in learning more about the IBM Spectrum Protect family or would like to start a discussion of any of the features shown here, please do get in touch either using the details below the video or the comment section. With that, it only remains for me to thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again soon.